All right, what's up? I'm Jay. Why you should pre-eat stuff before you weld. Welcome to Jay Designs. Let's get to it. So excuse the noise, but hopefully the mic will cancel a lot of this out. So right now, this is the project I'm working on. We're preheating this jig and this sway bar right here. No, you're not supposed to weld a sway bar. Check out the video on that one if you want to see if it works or not. So I've already tack welded this here, but originally before preheating this jig right below it wasn't hot yet. It was cold, right? But this tack weld, I temp gunned it. That tack weld was essentially 200 degrees and the jig was about 100 because it's freaking hot outside right now. But essentially what happens or what heat is at its most fundamental level is your little molecules, you know, we're going to show them with like my fingertips, right? The molecules of steel when they're at 200 degrees start to jiggle. That's what heat is at its most fundamental level. It's just jiggly molecules. Uh, as they start to jiggle, when they get hotter and hotter, they start to move further away. And as we know, when we weld stuff, it gets friggin' hot. So shortly after welding, I temp gunned it, and that was 250 degrees. So these molecules right here expanded away from each other. But the ones in the bottom, you know, assuming we weren't preheating, uh, these ones would be close to one another. So what you're going to get if you're welding up here, well, essentially they start far away when you're welding, but as that weld cools back down, they contract. So if you have the bottom part not moving and this upper part contracting because it's cooling, because all you did was weld the top one, you'll get this whole jig bowing. Now, I did use square, square tube on this jig specifically to counteract that bowing. Uh, square tube is inherently good at dealing with bending. It's uh, one of the best, except for like a freaking I-beam. Anyways, but that, in essence, is why you want to preheat. It, 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 to bring it on uh, really short, short and sweet, essentially, when you do welds, they, cool, they get really, really hot and they cool down, and that cooling leads to contraction. I'll probably try to put another little tidbit in this video, you know, showing the warping that comes from that cooling. But that is essentially why you do it. Do you need to do it? No, absolutely not. But with this sway bar, we got four points. One, two, three, four. And those have to be, you know, in the right place relative to one another. And they can't move, right? You got the chassis mounts, and then over here is where it mounts the spindle. You got your sway bar end links that will come up off of there. They all got to be in the right place, so... That's why we're preheating. Another thing preheating can do is it can kind of like condition your weld. So uh, you can, if you have a welder that's not powerful enough to weld this, you can preheat it, get this guy up to temp where your, where your uh, welder isn't essentially heating that material. That's especially important on a MIG weld where you can't just sit there and heat. But anyways, hope that helps somebody. So I just shifted the jig over that way. This side was on the preheat that you saw earlier. If we go ahead and temp gun that, 260. The weld itself, 176, that's fine. We're going to heat this side. It obviously got more heat on the bottom just because that was the side closer. Holy shit, that's hot. <laughs> oh, 360. I think the side was closer to the uh, 400. That's a lot. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's what we want. We want the bottom jig to be super hot, and this part is going to get just as hot. Obviously, I think I said I temp gun that, that top part, and the weld was... Uh, I temp gun the part right after welding and it only showed like 250 something like that um, obviously when you're actually welding and the metal is actually molten it's it's a whole lot hotter it's just the, the you know the material dissipating the heat uh, throughout the rest of the structure or the sway bar or whatever so anyways we want to try to get it up close to that temperature as possible get the entire part up to welding temperature and that's going to minimize warping another thing i just thought about pertaining to preheating welds something this can help with is hardness so you ever heard of weld being hard this is where it comes from it comes from this cooling factor of molecules starting very very far apart because you just welded it it's hot and as they cool they contract but you know there'd be another molecule out here that this one is moving away from so anyways the two molecules as they start you know closing in on each other they the bonds between those two molecules start getting stressed and that's actually where this hardness come from comes from if you ever try to drill through a piece of welded steel it is much harder than drilling through a piece of steel that's not welded and that's why so how this pertains to preheating is uh your weld is you know it's, it's all about that temperature differential your weld like i just temp on this thing it's almost 400 degrees i'm doing a lot of welding in this and over here it's like 200 so you want to preheat you know this material because that differential in temperature means less hardness and i think most people think hardness is a good thing but in you know a lot of cases hardness is not a good thing so hardness um while it's good in i guess some applications 
um, it can lead to brittleness. And in this application in particular, this is a sway bar. So there's an end link on that side and it's turning one way and there's an end link on this side and it's turning another way. They're literally in opposing directions. So one arm's going this way, one arm's going this way. This is a torsion bar effectively. It's a spring and uh, probably goes without saying, but you don't want a spring to be hard. You want it to be supple. You want it to be able to twist and return to its shape and it can't do that if it's hard. So especially in this application, this is somewhere where we really want to preheat. So yeah, if you like that nerdy stuff, make sure and subscribe because that's what I'm into. If you like building stuff, that's what I'm into. So that sway bar is for this truck right here. It's got a nice high clearance front end that isn't compatible with the factory sway bar that kind of jogs down. And that's why you see that jig outside. It's got that straight sway bar. So I'm just adding the sway bar back into this truck. Kind of weird, but it's what we do for off-road performance and a truck with no compromises essentially. Another big thing that's coming on in this thing is we're gonna get to the camper. Um, I've actually got some uh, cardboard aid to design. No, just kidding. It's not cardboard aid to design camper. I actually have CAD models of that. That's the whole point. This truck has a custom flatbed on it. Thanks for watching.